Hello, so in this video we're going to talk about how to install a Ford 5 liter EFI engine into a, an older vehicle and try to maintain the factory wiring harness for the uh, Ford engine. So this uh, engine came out of a 1987 Ford Econoline. It's a 5 liter V8. This one did not have air conditioning. And it did not have cruise control, but it's an automatic. So that works pretty good for me with what I want to do. So I bought a van for $500 and had it picked up by a wrecker and taken to a junkyard. And they removed the engine and transmission for me in one piece. It seemed like a, a good idea at the time because I didn't have a place to take the vehicle apart. But what I found out when I got there was that they removed the engine and transmission using a tow truck. They just used the uh, picker on the back of the truck to lift it out. They didn't have their... Uh, garage fully operational and they also they threw away a lot of fasteners when I they took the engine and transmission out for me which is a bit of a problem which I so I'd recommend you probably try and do it yourself if you can so you can maintain all the fasteners there's a few things you want to keep with the, this when you get the whole vehicle together so you want to get the uh, charge indicator that's one thing I did not keep but probably should have would have made things a bit easier as we'll talk about with the alternator you want to get the uh, gas pedal. You want to get both fuel pumps. There's a high pressure pump and a lift pump in the uh, five liter vehicles. I can't find the fuel pump right now. I'd like to show it to you. But it's a Bosch pump and they're fairly expensive. And the one thing I wanted to show you was that on the high pressure side, they're hard to uh, get a proper hose bar fitting to fit onto there because it's a metric fitting and not easy to obtain. Like depending like if you have a factory pump, if you go from uh, elsewhere, it might be easier to set up. And then there's a bunch of wiring you're going to want to get. So I guess I'll take the camera off the stand and we'll take a look at where we're at right now. So this uh, being a, it's an EEC4 computer in here and it needs to have vehicle speed sensor. When they lifted the transmission out, they damaged the uh, speed sensor. So I picked up another one here. That part number could be useful for you. It does not come with a gear. I have the gear still. They also damaged the kick down system. So I'm going to need to get uh, go into the transmission and change the uh, kick down actuator, which is not a problem because I want to put in something like a low car shifter in this vehicle. I want to keep it as stock as possible except for the engine and transmission. So uh, I had to go to another junkyard and collect uh, nuts and bolts. So that's uh, five dollars worth of bolts I had to go pick up. Not a big deal. You want to get the uh, rollover vent from the uh, fuel tank. You want to get the uh, vapor canister off the frame rail. I grabbed most of the intake system. Grab the uh, air cleaner. It's got two two-inch hoses on it. Actually, that's the uh, air cleaner there. Just so I can run it without worrying about anything. I just put two two-inch uh, blue caps on the intake. So this is uh, the uh, truck style engine. It's not the, uh, the Ford Mustangs have a different style intake on them. I don't know too much about them. If you were to wait long enough, you could probably find a, a Mustang that they're chopping up and you get it all together if you want to go that route. But it wasn't a big deal for me. I have lots of space for height. The width is a bit of a problem for me. The alternator is going to be sticking out of the hood. And then I don't need the uh, power steering stuff at all. So I need to compact the uh, accessory drive system here somehow. Got the uh, dipstick. Engine's just sitting in here. I just got a 4x4 four four across the oil pan with this vehicle where the uh, center link is. It's all good, so I'm not too worried about that. Although it's going to squish my suspension when I take that board out, or the block of wood out. Got enough space at the, the front and the back. I think I have a, a couple inches before I hit the factory radiator. And like I said, I want to keep this stock. I'm going to see if I can use the ammeter somehow in here. I haven't checked the 
resistance on it. It goes to plus and minus 25. So we'll see if that's useful or not. Otherwise, I need to use a light like this light here and a 510 ohm resistor on the alternator. So on the alternator, this one's got a 2G alternator, which is basically just a regular alternator that has a voltage regulator scabbed onto it. So you have to connect the wiring to the voltage regulator, which is kind of bizarre to me. But I guess this is what they did in the 80s. So you have two high current outputs coming out here. So they're add together to 130 amps, I believe. You join the uh, yellowish wire together to the regulator and then this needs to go to a keyed power source through a 510 ohm resistor and you can have that in parallel with a light if you wish just to give you a warning for charging and that'll turn on the alternator basically the alternator ends up being a ground and it draws current through that light depending on what's going on and it won't work if you don't have it so you need to hook that up somehow so I did a lot of wire stripping to get this all down to the bare minimum. When I got the vehicle, I had like all of the wiring just about. I chopped it all out with all the connectors and everything and uh, had to go through the wiring diagrams and pare it all back and figure out what's not necessary. Kind of toss it to the side. To use the existing uh, fuel gauge in the vehicle, you need to use something like this adapter here. It's called a uh, SN34. That'll allow you to hook it up to a, any gas gauge. It's not like a digital signal. We'll work with this as far as I understand. So getting back to paring down the wiring. So what you'll need is to get some wiring diagrams. I'll post a link to these so you can uh, get them. So the uh, Ford truck and the Ford van have different color wiring for some reason. I don't know why they would do that. But uh, I guess I'll tell you why I'm using a Ford. So this is a, a Hupmobile and it's basically got a uh, a Murray body on it which is the same as a 34 Ford. So Hupmobile made their own engine but when I got it, this vehicle it had a, a Ford 289 in it that was seized. So I took that out and uh, this is what I'm putting in. So the Ford body and a Ford engine kind of makes sense to me. Going through the trouble of finding Hupmobile components and putting it in, just not really feasible in Canada. So this is an automatic, so it has an NDS. And you'll see that there's a uh, diode here. It's my understanding that diode is actually inside of the computer. So you don't need to worry about it. I'm not going to use power steering, so you need to jump the power steering signals together because uh, that pressure switch opens under high pressure, which would be a high load if you're like stalling out the engine on the uh, power steering pump. Then the vehicle speed sensor, it's a sine wave as far as I understand. I have the uh, wiring figured out back, so I, I don't need to guess at the polarity, but I was kind of wondering that for a little bit. Did not have AC, but it still had the accessory pin 10, so I'm just not going to be using that. And again, I guess when you cycle the engine, or cycle the AC, you'll see that the RPM will change on the car most of the time, because it has to make up for that load. And then this is the pins for the uh, van, the Econoline. So like I said, they're different colors. They say don't probe this connector with a multimeter. You can damage the pins. So try to follow that instruction. So this is the F series and the Bronco has different colors. Then this came out of another manual. Just a different way of showing the same wiring. It kind of helps. You gotta guess at it a little bit. You need to go through and figure out where all the big jumpers are. They have basically welded the copper together, as you'll find out as you're going through the loom. 
the injectors. I don't think there's anything too important to talk about on here. There's a self-test connector and the uh, VIP test connector. You can use that to read your codes. You don't need to have your dashboard. It just blinks a light. Nothing particularly important in here. Then there's a couple different kinds of the uh, ignition module. Some of them you're able to push start them, some of them you can't. So you just need to know what these wires are and where they go. We'll take a look at that in a minute. I just had printed that page off just so I could figure out which one I had. Then on the AOD transmission, the neutral safety switch, so you need the uh, crank only, that goes to the NDS pin on the uh, computer and also on the what is it on the uh, relay for the starter so it doesn't start when it's in gear and then the reverse lights then the 2G alternator so you can see that yellow white wire just goes Actually, that one's not included on mine. But yeah, it's uh, the white black is when you jump between the two modules. So which is kind of funny is that the uh, the regulator is not even attached to the alternator. It's kind of bizarre to me. But then you can measure the field through some ports. Then there's a 510 ohm resistor. So it's half watt to one watt minimum. You can go bigger, higher wattage if you want because that, that just tells you how much uh, current it can put through it and it won't overheat with a half watt resistor so that's good you can have that cluster light if you want so now we'll look at the, that we'll go back to the uh, wiring here so I've got the computer when you take the computer out grab all of its housing there's a strap here for grounding the chassis otherwise it would be pretty hard to ground that any other way another strap there so I've gone through and figured out all the pins on the loose wires, basically. So you have uh, the NDS pin 30. I have the uh, AC cycling switch pin 10. And I figured out which uh, relays there are. There's the EEC relay, which is a computer relay. And then there's the fuel pump relay. You want to Take the uh, rollover switch here. That's going to be found just right in here on the van. If you ever hit a bump or someone kicks it, your van won't start. You got to just push that button, and it will capture the the ball until you hit it again. And then it breaks the circuit. So that goes to the fuel pumps. There's two fuel pumps, and uh, originally. Number 24, which is uh, open on high pressure. Right, so that's uh, the power steering. So I need to join that to something in here somewhere. I can't remember exactly which wire that is. Other than that, you kind of just cut open the loom. Just use some sewing tools here. Just something like that. You can strip off the loom pretty easy. It's a messy job. What are you going to do? You'll find that a couple of pairs of wires that go up to the ignition system are uh, shielded. So just take care with them. Don't destroy the shielding. You'll have to pull some wires through this rubber grommet back and forth. That's the map sensor. I just went ahead and labeled everything as I was picking away at it just so I knew where I was at. There's a lot of uh, joints in the wiring all over the place. If I had any extra joint that didn't need to go anywhere, I just uh, heat shrinked it over. This connector here is the O2 sensor. I don't have the O2 sensor, so I need to pick up another one of those. Otherwise, I just run in an open loop. So you have your VIP connector. Then you have your, uh, sorry, 
that's the VIP connector there. That's just a self-test connector. There's a cap here for starting aid. I guess that, that's for a, a diesel. I, they have it on all of them for whatever reason. I think the cap doesn't have anything under it. It just covers it. This is the VSS. So you can figure out which pins they are. You gotta work your way back and forth through it. There's multiple connectors and the junkyard broke a lot of the clamps on the connectors as well, which is unfortunate. They mean well, but uh, they didn't do quite as good a job as I had hoped. On the transmission, you'll find uh, that's the initial safety switch there. These are the wires here, so I went through and figured out again which uh, pins they are compared to that wire diagram that I've got. We kind of looked at the alternator already. There's a loom that goes over to the other side of the engine. So most of it's going to pop out on the passenger side, which is where the computer is naturally, so I kind of plan to keep it that way. I'll have to rebuild the loom with something. Again, it's pretty messy, unfortunately. Let's just pop over the other side here. There's a couple uh, idiot lights here. So there's oil pressure sender and then the uh, coolant sender. These are separate from the ones that the uh, computer uses. It uses coolant scent pressure or temperature. It doesn't use oil pressure as far as I know. So that's that shielded wire that goes up to the ignition module, which is right there on the distributor. Just trying to think if there's anything else that you look at. There's a bunch of relays. I think they're called the TAD relays or something. That's, uh, I gotta figure out if I'm gonna be going on with that or not. That's the original wiring for the Huffmobile. It's cloth wiring. It hopefully doesn't have asbestos in it, but likely it does. From what I found at work, a lot of that old wiring does have asbestos in it. That's the uh, temperature sensor for the uh, inside the dash. I haven't put that in water yet to see if it works or not. Hopefully it does. You will want to get the uh, vacuum reservoir. That should make uh, your vehicle run better. I can't remember for the uh, reasoning behind it. I think when you stab the throttle, it needs it. What else did we do? All right, so there's gonna be a bunch of vacuum lines you don't use anymore. So you can get these black silicone covers and put them on there. I wish I had to kick down cables in better condition than they are. I've got them for the most part. I'll have to rebuild that and make sure it works. You wanna get the uh, oil filler. Some more air system here. I think that, is that the pump that goes to the uh, catalytic converter maybe? Gotta figure that out still. Canada is pretty easy going with this stuff. If you're in the States, you gotta look at things a little bit differently. Let's save that and stop there. There's the EGR on the back. Doesn't seem to be doing any harm where it is. I try to get all of that. I have it to the point where I can crank this thing now. I'll take a quick look at that. So I've got the uh, relay, grab that off of the uh, fender. There's a distributor start signal that you need to connect. That's why I had that one wire, batch of wiring out actually that showed the distributor. So you need that for it to know that it's cranking. It does something a bit differently when you do that. 
I just have a, a relay here. I think this is a run, so this is on when you've turned that on. And then on this side, this is the start. So when you push it, it cranks. And this turns on the ignition on this side. So if you get a one with the momentary and one that's locked, you'll be good to go. I just jumpered that on that one side. We've got a couple of power sources here. So I have the EC relay start run. And then this is the keyed power supply for the O2 sensor. So you'll need to get that. So this uh, fuse block is uh, keyed power, basically. And then the other, like I said, the other wire off of here kicks in this relay. Then you also hook up your uh, fuse links here. So I've got one for EEC relay and one for uh, fuel pump relay. So you keep all of your uh, fusible links intact when you're hacking stuff out. There's one thing that I ripped out. I don't know if it's going to become a problem or not. There's a resistance wire in the dashboard and I honestly can't make heads or tails of whether I need that thing or not or what it did, but when you're going through the dash you will find a wire that says resistance on it and uh, I didn't notice that. It was very hot that day and the people at the, the junkyard were actually surprised I was working trying to rip this stuff out. But uh, keep mind of that I guess or that way you won't have any regrets afterwards. I don't know if it's a problem for me or not. So I need to get that fuel pump hooked in to a fuel source. I just have a jerry can but I can't find the fuel pump right now otherwise I'd try to fire this thing up. So I think we'll, we'll wrap it up with this right now. This is where I'm at with the Hupmobile and then I'll get another video of this thing when it's running. Thank you.